Replacing singers in a rock band is pretty challenging to say the least. On one hand, the new vocalist can bring something new, fresh, and exciting to the table. It might be their vocal styles or artistic vision, but they could rejuvenate and breathe new life into the group's music. But on the other hand, the collaboration might not work, especially if they have vastly different style musically or creatively. It could quickly boomerang and not only alienate their following, but basically drag the entire band down. Luckily, there are rock bands who realized their mistake immediately and let go of replacement vocalists who didn't fit their style. Here are five of those singers with short-lived stints in legendary bands. But first, go ahead and subscribe to our channel for more classic rock videos and click that bell icon so you'll get first dibs to all our new rock awesome content. Number 5. Ian Gillen, Black Sabbath Ozzy Osbourne was booted out of Black Sabbath and Ronnie James Dio filled in for him. Dio fronted the band from 1979 to 1982. He left after a rift with Geezer Butler and Tony Iommi and then formed his own band. After that, both Butler and Iommi held auditions for the next singer. White Snake's David Coverdale was considered for the part and even Michael Bolton auditioned. They eventually decided to have former Deep Purple vocalist Ian Gillen on board. Gillen recorded his first and only album with Black Sabbath titled Born Again, and although it was a commercial success, it's clear that Gillen didn't suit Black Sabbath's style. After the tour in support of Born Again, Gillen opted out to join Deep Purple again. Black Sabbath then hired an unknown Los Angeles vocalist named David Donato, who recorded a demo with them but was fired after. For their 12th studio album, Seventh Star, Tony Iommi was the only one left from the classic lineup and he enlisted the help of Glenn Hughes. It was supposed to be a solo release from Iommi, but Warner Brothers insisted it should be under the name Black Sabbath. A few days before the tour, Hughes got into a fight and his injury affected his singing. So, vocalist Ray Gillen was then brought in. Although former Joshua frontman Jeff Fenhold claimed that he became Black Sabbath's vocalist from January to May 1985. Iommi didn't confirm it. They next hired heavy metal vocalist Tony Martin, who recorded three albums with them. At number 4, Trevor Horn from Yes. After John Anderson's departure, Chris Squire invited singer Trevor Horn to join Yes in 1980 as a full time member. Horn recorded drama and even went on tour with the band. However, his year long tenure ended when he decided to pursue a different career path, which is music production. Drama showcased a heavier and harder sound than its predecessors, but unfortunately for the band, it was the first album since 1971 that didn't achieve gold record status from the RIAA. Horn still worked with Yes, but as a producer for 1983's 9125 and 1987's Big Generator. And number 3, Gary Sharon, Van Halen. After a temporary reunion with original frontman David Lee Roth, Van Halen brought in Gary Sharon from Boston rock group Extreme. He recorded his only studio album with the band in 1998, Van Halen 3, which was a departure from their usual style. The songs were more experimental and notably longer. Van Halen was catapulted to international stardom because of their heavy and hard rocking songs, but for Van Halen 3, they focus a bit more on ballads. Sharon returned to the studio with the band and began work on a follow up. But the material was crap, and Sharon left in November 1999 because of musical differences. At number 2, Ray Wilson, Genesis After Phil Collins announced his departure in 1996, Tony Banks and Mike Rutherford went on to work on their next studio album, Calling All Stations. They held an audition for new singers and eventually hired Scottish singer Ray Wilson, who fronted rock band Stillskin. They announced him as their new vocalist in 1997 and they completed a European tour in support of Calling All Stations. They were supposed to embark on a North American trek but had to cancel because of poor ticket sales. It wasn't long before Banks and Rutherford announced that they won't continue to record or tour anymore. According to Wilson, they just called him up to say, we've decided not to continue because the market doesn't want us. Before we unveil the last short-lived vocalist on our list, don't forget to drop us a like and comment if you like this video. If you want more classic rock, then click that subscribe button. Now, at number 1, John Corabi, Motley Crue When Vince Neil left in 1992, 
He was replaced by John Corabi, who recorded Motley Crue's 1994 self-entitled album and the EP Quaternary. It was a commercial failure and their longtime fans felt alienated because of the heavier sound and also Neil's absence. Corabi was fired in 1996 because of poor reception at a show in Tucson, Arizona. The venue had a 15,000 seat capacity but only 4,000 tickets were sold. The following year, Motley Crue reunited with Neil. Just to clear things up, these replacement vocalists weren't awful or bad. They simply didn't fit the band's sound and style. So what do you think of our list? Do you know any other frontman who you think fits here? Comment them down below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and click that bell icon to get more classic rock. See you on the next video.